The year was 2008. Breaking Bad had its first ever pilot episode, Katy Perry was both hot and cold at the same time, and Mero was just gearing up to commit some war crimes. You see, Mero was just about to attend his first ever Yu-Gi-Oh! regional, but for this event, he had a plan. The deck Mero had cooked up for this tournament was called Self-Destruct Button Turbo. Self-Destruct Button is a card that is currently forbidden in the modern age, but at the time was perfectly legal because nobody really thought much of it. What this card does is while your life points are lower than your opponents, and the difference is 7,000 points or more, both players' life points become zero. So by simply combining this card with a bunch of other cards that reduce your own life points, such as Inspection or Wall of Revealing Light, you could turn every match into a draw. Now you might be wondering, why on earth would someone enter an event with the sole purpose of trying to create a draw, especially considering a strategy like this only really works well if you go first, otherwise your opponent will have time to set up counterplay such as Solemn Judgment to negate the self-destruct button, or Cold Wave which prevents you setting any trap cards. Well that is where the true genius of this strategy comes into play, as Mero had found a little bit of a loophole in the rules. It was round 4 of the event, and Mare had been paired up against a Gladiator Beast opponent, which was considered one of the strongest decks at the time. And not only that, but his opponent was most definitely considered a Whale. Which, for those of you that don't know the term, basically means the guy had way too much disposable income. A secret rare Hera, and an entire deck of foiled out cards wherever they were available. His entire deck must have cost him easily around $1,000, whereas our protagonist deck only cost him maybe a couple McDonald's Big Macs. It was safe to say that he wasn't exactly considered the favourite in this matchup. The round begins, and both players roll a die, with the player rolling the higher amount, dictating who goes first. Mero wins the dice roll, all according to plan. Now remember this, as it will become very important later on. Mero chose to go first, and proceeds to draw, and draw, and draw, and draw, until eventually he hits both an inspection and a self-destruct button. He activates the inspection, sets the button face down, along with three more face down stacked as bluffs, then he passes the turn. His opponent's turn begins, and he picks up a card, but the moment he entered the standby phase, Mero made his move, by declaring the inspection. What Inspection does is allows you to randomly select one card in your opponent's hand and look at it, at the cost of 500 life points. He does so and immediately spots a Mystical Space Typhoon. At this moment, and I quote, My butt locked up faster than a time lock vault in a bank. Because this meant his opponent had drawn a way to destroy the Inspection, since Mystical Space Typhoon could be used at any time to destroy a spell and trap card. So if his opponent caught on to what was about to happen, he could have stopped it. But thankfully, he was a little bit clueless. Mero uses Inspection. His opponent pauses for a moment, looking incredibly confused, but just allows it anyway. Activates Inspection again. And then again. And then again. At this point, the opponent just yells out to a judge across the room. The judge yells out, What's the card? And the opponent replies, Inspection! The judge, without missing a beat, immediately responds without needing any further context, he can use it as much as he wants. Apparently the judge had already read this ruling three days prior just by sheer coincidence. The opponent, now looking incredibly flustered and quite a bit irritated, asks to proceed the duel. Mero continues inspecting all the way down to 1000 life points, at which point he flips the self-destruct button, nuking both players instantly. Draw. His opponent, whilst rolling his eyes, reluctantly scoops up his cards, probably realising his mistake of holding on to that mystical space typhoon. At this point, the match had already been going on for 14 minutes. Game 2 is about to begin, so the opponent picks up the dice and rolls it again, presuming that because it was a tie, they would need to re-roll the dice to decide who gets to go first. But this is where Mero's true plan was revealed. He informs to his opponent this is actually not the case. In the case of a tie, the player who initially won the dice roll for the first game gets to decide again. His opponent now looking even more visibly irritated, and being quite vocal about it now, once again calls over the judge. 
and to Mero's surprise, the judge actually sided with the opponent. Mero was forced to appeal to the head judge, but initially, once again, sided with the opponent. Thankfully, after urging the judge to check the ruling once again on the UDE site, as he had checked it the night before to make sure, the judge realised his mistake, apologised, and with a rather sheepish grin on his face, rules in Mero's favour, and then says, have fun, adding an additional 5 minute time extension to the match due to his incorrect judgement taking up some time. It was at this moment that Mero watched all the emotion leave his opponent's face, before returning a moment later, even angrier than he was before. He knew what he was in for. For the next seven games in a row, Mero would simply tie the match, each time proceeding to go first, never allowing his opponent a moment to actually play the game. It got to a point where his opponent pulled out his phone and started playing Sonic the Hedgehog to pass the time. This goes on for the full 40 minute round, before starting the 5 minute extension. His opponent attempts to plead with the judges to have the extension revoked, knowing Mero would actually have to side deck in his real win condition during the last 5 minutes in order to win the match. But of course, the judge just declines, allowing Mero to self destruct once again and move into side decking for the final game. Right before the end of the 5 minutes, Mero had sided in 15 cards, a combination of burn cards that inflict damage to your opponent when they are used, and trap cards that make him immune to damage for a turn. Now for those of you that don't know how the time rules worked in Yu-Gi-Oh at the time, essentially once the time limit for the match was reached, both players are given 2 turns to try to win the series. But, if no winner is decided, the player with the highest life points is deemed the victor. The game begins, and once again, Mero chose to go first, right as the time limit is reached, exactly as Mero had planned from the beginning. Four turns remain to decide the game. He started by activating Goblin Thief to burn his opponent for 500 and gain 500, before setting one card and passing the turn. Three turns remain. His opponent, for the very first time in the entire match, gets to play a card. He normal summons a Bastari, but is immediately met with a Hallowed Life Barrier, which prevents Mero from taking any damage that turn. Reluctantly, his opponent just sets two cards and passes the turn back. Two turns remain. Mero draws a couple of cards before setting one trap card and a bunch of bluffs before passing back. One turn remains. Immediately as soon as his opponent's turn began, Mero activates Rainbow Life, which once again prevents him from taking any damage that turn. His opponent observes his set cards before turning to the judge, but before he can even ask the question, the judge states he will lose unless he can change the life points somehow. This definitely didn't leave him very pleased. He shoved all his cards to the side, stood up and screamed, you just wasted 40 minutes with a bitch deck. To which Mero replied, actually, it was 53 minutes. Mero's plan had well and truly succeeded. And that is where today's tale ends. Shoutouts to Mero for posting this story online all the way back in 2011. I doubt he'll ever see this, but it just seemed like too good a story for me not to make into a video. If you enjoyed this and would like to see more videos just like this one, make sure to let me know down below, as I'm sure there are plenty of forgotten tales out there just begging to be told. Thank you all for watching and remember to subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one. Laters.